I want to declare a few things as we close. And the first thing I want to declare is from Revelation chapter 3. I thought it was amazing that Jody, who I don't believe is here anymore, she had to go. But Jody talked about how on July 8th in Philadelphia, uh, 247 years ago, that there was the Declaration of Independence that was read with the ringing of the Liberty Bell. And I really believe that this is a word for New York City. And so I want to read this out in the spirit. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David. He who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie. And indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you, because you have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which will come upon the whole earth, to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Can you hear the Spirit of the Lord today? Say, behold, I am coming quickly. Can you hear the Spirit of the Lord say to this region and to New York City, I have set before you an open door, a door that no one can shut. And let me tell you what that door is. It is the door of mercy. And mercy is your new currency. Dutch Sheets began preaching that years ago, and I believe it's applicable for right now in this moment, that mercy is our currency in this season. And this door that is open is a door of mercy. For the last three years when I've come to this region, and specifically New York City, I've had great concern and great travail in my heart every time that I've come here. And I have felt that New York was hanging in the balance. But just this last time I came in June, I was here just a few weeks ago before we went back to Arizona. This the last time that I came and I flew by the Statue of Liberty as I was going into actually EWR, not JFK, but I saw in the spirit, I saw incense arising from this region. And I said, God, what is this? And he said, it is the incense of the cry of my people. And I have heard the cry of my people. And we have to understand the concept of a remnant. It doesn't take everybody. And in fact, the Bible cover to cover is a story of the remnant. Remnant. It's not a story of the majority. It's not the majority breaking through. It's not the majority obeying. It is the remnant that lifts their voice. It is the remnant that fasts and prays. It is the remnant that cries out. And I believe that God has shifted something in the destiny of New York City. And it connects to the destiny of the United States. Because the United States is hanging in the balance. We are in Joel chapter 2, where the Bible says, I will draw all nations down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and there I will enter into judgment with them. We are hanging in the balance in many ways, and as New York goes, so goes the nation. And I'm telling you prophetically in the spirit, there is an open door that is before you, and the one who has opened it is the one who holds the key of David, the Isaiah 22, 22 key, where the Bible says the government is upon his shoulders, and what he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. And I declare to you, New York City, the door of mercy is open to you. I declare to you, New York City, an acceptable season and times of refreshing. Kairos times of refreshing are open to you. Enter into your moment, New York City. Enter into your moment, New Jersey. Enter into your moment, tri-state area. Hear the word of the Lord. The door is open. The door of mercy and no no one can shut it. And the Lord says, no one can snatch my plans and purposes out of my hand for this region. There is no one that can snatch my plans and purposes. And the next thing I want to share is out of Ephesians. And it says that Jesus Christ is supreme. Can we say that together? Jesus Christ is supreme. And it says that he is supreme. He is far above every principality. 
Every principality, the word for principality is the word archon, archon, and it means ancient. It means from of old. You know, sometimes people think we're crazy when we start talking about things like Apostle Lewis started talking about earlier today, but you don't know what is upon the earth in the ages that the earth has existed. We don't know the creatures that have been upon the earth in the ages that it's existed. Many times I think that actually these were real creatures that at one time existed, you know, these are things that were worshipped. They were ancient. They were from of old and in a different age and a different era. But as Apostle Lewis saw those things in the spirit, the Bible clearly says, and we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to back up. We don't need to be intimidated. And in fact, the Lord is wanting to break the power of intimidation over this region. He wants to break the power of intimidation over New York City and it, because the Lord is above every principality, every archon. And it says he's above every every authority. The word authority is the word exousia. It's the difference between a person who is strong and has power in themselves and a police officer. The person who is strong and has power in themselves, they can punch you, they can hit you, they can hurt you, but they don't have any authority in the region that they are in. They are acting illegally in the region that they are in, doing whatever they are doing. The police officer comes and he has the badge, he has the authority, he has the exousia. So it's not just power because there's many powers in the earth, but God not only has all the power, he has all the exousia, he has all the authority, and he is far above every principality, he is far above every authority, and then it says he is far above every power, the root word there, dunamis, where we get our word dynamite from, explosive power, and also every dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age that is to come. And I want to declare and decree over you, New York City. I want to declare and decree over you, New Jersey. I want to declare and decree over you, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Delaware, this whole tri-state region, that Jesus Christ is supreme. And he is far above every power. He is far above every name. He is far above every authority. He is far above every other dominion and might and power in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that he is coming and every eye shall see him. Every eye shall see him. And we are in an age where we are living in Matthew 24, but we've got to have the oil of intimacy from Matthew 25. Because you cannot stand in Matthew 24 in the shakings and when scrolls are being broken open and when everything that can be shaken is being shaken, you cannot stand in Matthew 24 without the oil of intimacy of Matthew 25. And that is where we are right now. We are in Hebrews 12. We are in the book of Haggai. We are in Matthew 24. We're everything that can be shaken is being shaken, but those that can will stand. The Bible even talks about the elect being deceived, but I'm telling you, this remnant that God is raising up in this region, we're not going to be deceived. We're not going to shrink back. We're not going to put our hand to the plow and then look back. We are going to do everything the Lord has instructed us to do. The next thing I want to decree and declare is the Bible talks about the lukewarm church, and actually the city of Laodicea that is described as the lukewarm church. It says to the angel of the church of Laodicea, there's a whole thing to that that we don't have time to get into, but to the angel of the church of Laodicea that it talks about being uh, either hot nor cold and that the Lord would spit you out of your mouth. In that region of Laodicea, it was an actual physical region that John was writing about. And there was a cold mountain stream that flowed down from the mountain and it was good. It was nourishing. It was refreshing. And there was a hot water spring that bubbled up naturally naturally from the earth, but see the place where they met in the middle. The place of compromise, the place of mixture was the place that took that which was beneficial coming from above and that which was beneficial bubbling up from below and made it a diseased well, a diseased spring. You see, it lost its identity. The water that was cold lost its identity. The water that was hot bubbling up lost its identity and it lost its identity in the place of mixture and compromise. It is the place of mixture and compromise where we lose our God-given 
identity. And I want to decree and declare over New York City, you will no longer be a place of compromise and mixture. You will no longer be a place where you lose your God-given identity. And I decree and declare over you, New York City, you will be an inferno of the fire of God. You will be an inferno not of hell like Pastor Patricia showed us that picture, but you will be an inferno of the fire of God, of the revival of God, of the burning ones. The Jeremiah Lamphere anointing is coming back again. You're going to have to pull them out of prayer meetings to get them back to work. You're going to have to pull them out of prayer meetings to get them back on the force. You're going to have to pull them out of prayer meetings because the destiny of New York City will be fulfilled. The key of David is upon that city. The authority of the Lord is upon that city and it will come to pass. And there is no hex or vex or incantation or curse or spell that can stand against the word of the Lord because the word of the Lord is like a hammer. It breaks every hard thing into pieces. The word of the Lord is like a fire. It burns up and consumes everything in its path. The word of the Lord is like a sword that cuts through and pierces through and cannot be stopped. The word of the Lord is like an arrow shot from the glory.